This is the second video going over the problems from the exam we just took. So let's see. Suppose I have a spring attached to the ceiling with a weight attached. I stretch the spring as far as possible towards the ground, a distance of four feet. I then release it. I time it and the spring completes four circuits in 10 seconds. So what's going on? Well, here's the ceiling. I have a spring going down with a weight attached. I stretch it a distance of four feet, as far as it will go. I then release it. In the real world, what is the spring going to do? It's going to go up and then down and then up and then down. We know in the real world uh, that will actually get closer and closer together because of friction and all that. But for here, we can assume it continues forever like that. Well, there we go. There's a wave. What type of wave is it? It's starting at the bottom, going up. It's starting at its max or min, which means it's a cosine wave. So we do y equals a cosine omega t. And now I just start filling things in. I need an amplitude. This is the one issue that a bunch of people had. The total distance the spring is going is 4. So how do we find my amplitude? If the total displacement is 4, the amplitude is at equilibrium. It's half of that. So the amplitude is not 4. It's actually 2. But then again, a regular cosine wave starts at the top and goes down. This is starting at the bottom and going up which means it's not a regular cosine wave, it's flipped. So it's a negative 2. Now we just need to find omega. And we said what? Well, this omega, that's just how my period gets changed. That's how we did it before when graphing sine and cosine functions, trig functions. And the rule was what? 2 pi over omega equals your period. We need to find our period then. We are told, let's see, I time it and the spring completes four circuits in 10 seconds. So let's see, if it completes four circuits in 10 seconds, you can do some quick math. It means the period is 2.5 seconds. Now just plug that into this equation and solve. So I get two pi over omega, equals 2.5. Solve for omega, so multiply the omega over. 2.5 omega equals 2 pi. Divide the 2.5. Omega equals 2 pi over 2.5. And there we go. That apparently is omega. So now, we stick that in my equation. 2 pi over 2.5, and then the t carries along. And there's my equation right there. You can leave this like this, which some of you did. You can actually divide it. 2 divided by 2.5 is 0.8. So you can do 0.8 omega t. I didn't care how you wrote it. But there we go. Use the period. 2 pi divided by omega equals the period. Solve for omega and then plug it in. The other two problems, find the period of the spring. Well, you actually found that right here. Find the frequency. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So if the period is 2.5, it's 1 over 2.5, and you're done. Again, you can simplify that out in the calculator or leave it like that. I didn't actually care. Uh, one thing I would say for those of you watching this, if you're actually looking at your exams online while doing this, a bunch of you got the period wrong. And if you got the period wrong, then you were going to get the frequency wrong because the frequency is reciprocal of that. Knowing that, if you got the period wrong, but whatever period you got, you took the reciprocal for the frequency, then I gave you credit for that because you had the right idea, you did the right trick, taking the reciprocal of the period, you just had the wrong answer from part B, so part C had to be wrong. So if you're wondering about the grades on those, yes, if you messed up the period, you lost credit, but if you just took your answer and took the reciprocal, then you got full credit for the frequency. Good. Uh, let's see. The, this last one right here with polar co coordinates. Again, I mentioned in the last video, there were several with polar conversions on the exam. And for the most part, people did well beyond a few algebra mistakes. So we're just going over a couple of these. So we have r equals 4 over 2 plus sine theta. And we want to convert that. 
We had mentioned before, we have our conversions, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. We can convert r, just take the square root of both sides, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. But there's no conversion for sine theta, we need an r sine theta. So now you just have to do algebra. There are different ways to do this. Probably the easiest, and I think the way most of you did it on your exam, cross multiply. Multiply this over here. Make sure to distribute. You get 2r plus r sine theta equals 4. Now just convert. Let's see. 2r, square root both sides. r is just the square root of x squared plus y squared plus r sine theta is y equals 4. And now you're done. As I mentioned before, you can do more algebra to simplify this out if you want to, but for the purposes of the exam, doing this algebra to here, and then just doing the conversion and leaving it, that was completely fine. The other one, two x plus five y squared minus six y equals nine. And we want to convert that to polar coordinates, polar equation. And in this case, you can do a direct conversion. That's two x is r cosine theta. So two r cosine theta plus five y squared. Here, just make sure you your algebra correct. Y is r sine theta. So y squared is r sine theta squared, which squares both terms. You have to distribute that in. So it becomes five r squared sine squared theta minus six times y, which is just r sine theta, equals nine. I was fine if you left it like that. A bunch of people factored an r out. So you've got r times two cosine theta plus five r sine squared theta minus six sine theta equals nine. Other people then divided this whole term over there. I was fine with whatever you actually did. I want to say for the most part people did okay on it, uh, but there were some issues right here with squaring both terms when you have y squared. And then if that was messed up, the factoring caused an issue right in here, keeping an r here and leaving the sign squared. So there were little algebraic problems right there. Um, I think that's all of the questions from the exam. I left off a few that, um, for the most part, everybody did fine on, so it wasn't an issue. Um, I'm going to upload the actual score key to Blackboard once I figure out how our scanner here in the office works. But I'll upload these videos now so you have them to look over. And as always, if you have any questions, email me, stop by my office, whatever.